Hello, how's everybody doing today? Hey, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the COVID-19 diffusion. I think you've heard of it in the news lately. Um, but what we want to do is we want to put a geographic analysis spin on that. And we're going to apply four-level analysis using the ESPN DC, I don't know, grid to help us make sense of this. But before we do that, I want to thank Miss Holly King at Eagle Crest High School for helping me with this video, and I hope you find it useful. Hey, started a new YouTube channel to uh, take care of this remote learning and to reach out to lots of people around the country. So if you find this video interesting, please feel free to use it. Let's take a look at a subfield of geography called medical geography or health geography. And it's gaining a lot of attention right now, obviously because of the COVID disease. And we're gonna look at the diffusion patterns and start to analyze how is this disease spreading. Now over here on the left, diseases usually start with a source and this is the point of origin and with the covid virus this was in china but when we look at friction of distance here the more closer in proximity that people are to the source we usually see a higher incidence of infections that occur and then usually the further away you go this results in a lower number of incidents um, within this spread of this disease however we live in a super globalized world interconnected um, trading society with global connections and this is transforming some things and transportation can have a big part of that so for example roads can spread the disease at the state and national level by people with truck drivers and driving and, and interconnecting between cities and then on an international even on a domestic scale airports are a big um, element of diffusion that spreads this internationally or across our country and so we're going to look at the different types of diffusion and start to understand those so what is diffusion? Diffusion is just the spread of anything, of something. It goes from one place to another. Now there's a variety of types of diffusion. The first one, and the, really the, the major one that we're going to focus on in this discussion is expansion diffusion. And what this is, is that the number of infected increases. It expands, if you will. Now expansion diffusion can follow a couple different patterns. The graphic on the left here illustrates a contagious diffusion. And what happens here is from a point of origin, here at the center, this is the point of origin, and then it spreads outward as it goes down through these wings. And then through contact with people, the diffusion spreads. And you can see it goes in these rings of through interaction and contact among people. And it spreads like a wave. Oftentimes, contagious confusion is described as uh, spreading like a wave. Now, there are barriers that can slow down or stop the spread of something spreading contagiously. Um, right now, we're involved with a lot of social distancing going on, and this is something that they're trying to do to slow down the contagious transmission of this by, by decreasing the number of interactions that we have with each other. There is a second type of diffusion, um, and it's part of expansion diffusion, but it's called hierarchical, and it, and it follows a different pattern. So this is when something spreads when, when something's super connected from the most interconnected places and centers of influence, like big cities um, is a case, like New York City is, is a big city. And then it leapfrogs or skips some areas from big city to big city. And so on the graphic on the left, we can see this. So right over here, um, we can see here's the city and then it leapfrogs all the way over here to another big city and it skips all of these cities. Now, usually that would have happened through a, a, an airplane or interactions of people who travel between these places and these other places are, are skipped. Now, eventually through contagious diffusion, it might come back into these places, but initially it skips and it leapfrogs. So here's the from large city to me medium cities. It extends right here. And that's probably based, you know, what are we on March 24th right now? That's about where we are probably in the United States. And then here we go, uh, the third element, then it spreads contagiously at the local areas or from small, large cities within the local communities. So this is a little bit of contagious aspects here, but also to smaller cities is how this pattern works. Now, barriers that relate to this can be closing of airports, borders, trains, closing trains, these can slow the transmission across international borders or across space. So those type of measures are designed to target spreading um, through hierarchical diffusion. But the reality is, is that both are at play here and we just need to be able to see them. So let's look at this. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a series of maps and we're going to look at, use four level analysis, which many of you are familiar with. We're going to look at what, where, when, and scale, and I'll help you with that. And then we're going to have you guys analyze patterns by looking at the patterns of how COVID-19 has been spreading over time. We're also going to ask you to think about why there, how did it get there? What were the processes that spread the disease and, and how can we make sense of this and, and trying to define that pattern with the types of diffusion that I just mentioned? And then finally, level four, so what? What do we do with this information? What if this pattern continues into the future? What are the impacts and the effects that this could have on our ESPN DC, E standing for economic, our, the economy, social, our society as a whole, obviously with isolation and things like that that many of us are experiencing right now, political and the politics and the government policies that are, being, that are um, happening. The N stands for the environment, what is the impact on the environment right now? Not a lot of discussion of that going on right now, but there is potential impacts on the environment with the pollution. Actually, a good one. Pollution has gone down in China um, as a result of people being inside. So the pollution has actually declined. Uh, D, demographic. This relates to birth rates and death rates and migration and um, potentially, and we hope not, but death rates could rise. And I, I hope that they don't, but this is something that could happen. And then finally, culturally, how, how do we interact with each other, the beliefs and the values of, of, of our society? So we're going to look at these things and, and, and see what we can make sense of. So let's use some actual maps. So thank you to Johns Hopkins University for putting together this um, visual. And what I've done is I've, I've kind of just created a series of slides that show the spread. So you can see the source over here in Wuhan, China. This is where it's it started. And this um, is in January 13th of 2020. And pretty much Wuhan was the main epicenter of this diffusion. And when we look, if we go to the next slide, we can see here that it spread within a week throughout most of Eastern China. Now this is where most of the people of China live is in Eastern China. And, and it spread, this, is, this data is by province. So you can see that it spread uh, almost all of the province, provinces of eastern China. Um, and that follows, to me, looks like a contagious diffusion with contact and close proximity and the, and the spread. And China at this point put really strong measures into place. But if you also look on this map, you start to see in some places like Paris in France. You see France. Paris is one of the places that first had elements of COVID. We also see in the United States places like Los Angeles and Seattle and it looks like Phoenix and Chicago. All of these places are major airports, have major airports um, and, and it's just beginning. January 27th, we continue to see the contagious diffusion in China, but we're seeing some other hot spots starting to pop up. Dubai in the UAE in the Middle East right here is, is an example of this. We start to see some pockets of Europe, looks like Mu Germany, Munich, Germany in particular, uh, England and the United Kingdom starts to get this. And so we're starting to see this hierarchy. It's not spreading across everybody. It's leapfrogging a variety of places. February 4th, we see an expansion. This is Iran right here. Um, Iran is a unique situation, not a particularly internationally connected place, but a, a, an interesting process as to why it's going through there um, and spreading so rapidly in Iran. And clearly a contagious pattern of with once it hit Iran, it spread rapidly within there, possibly because of um, not putting measures into place, but a variety of things could affect that. And you can see the expansion of Europe and some of the cities. New York City appears on the map at this point. Rio de Janeiro in Brazil is popping up. So we're starting to see this hierarchy. It's not an equal distribution. Now, Africa, right at this point, remains no incidence. But that can be for a variety of reasons. That could be because of lack of testing. But it's also one of the least connected um, parts of the world. So there could be a variety of reasons as to why Africa is not showing up. March 2nd, we see continued diffusion and the expansion. The Europe is exploding um, with COVID cases, particularly in Western Europe. Eastern Europe, 
seems to have fewer. That could be a case of lack of testing, um, but remains to be seen that we'll look at after the fact. The United States, if you see the dots, all those dots reflect cities. Denver, Denver's made an appearance here relatively early in the process. Um, Denver is one of the busiest airports in the United States, fourth busiest in the United States, definitely a top 20 airport in the world. And so not surprisingly that, that uh, relatively early in this process that, that Denver is infected. Um, but other large cities and large metropolitan areas are starting to, in the United States, are starting to become infected. And you're seeing contagious diffusion and hierarchical diffusion. The leapfrogging is still occurring from big city to big city. But then within the local city scales, you're seeing the expansion of that on a contagious fashion. March 16th, the United States has continued to expand and pretty much every state on March 16th of the United States has cases. Um, South America is entering into it, especially on the East Coast with some where the large cities are in Brazil and Argentina. Africa is still has very few confirmed cases, but once again, probably because of testing. And then let's go back over to China. China is exploding with cases at this point in time at March 16th. Large numbers. These Some of these cities and provinces are above 10,000 people. Okay, And they're a few weeks ahead of where the United States and Europe are in terms of transmission. So we just talked about different types of diffusion and now it's your turn to answer it. So if you're one of our students at Eagle Crest, I want you to go to your teacher Schoology page or wherever they've directed you to do it. And there's gonna be an activity, a Google activity that you're going to click on um, and answer a series of questions that you see on the slide here, the level four analysis. So that's where you're gonna go and that activity will guide you through that. And um, if you're not an Eagle Crest student and would like to use this video, I will put a link uh, back down in the comments to um, so you can get the Google activity so that you want to use it in your own classes wherever you are feel free to use this activity now if this is ex the whole event here has uh, created interest in you personally in medical or health geography I've included a couple links here of medical geography history and overview of medical geography if you want to find out what that actually is if you want to know a little bit more about the spread of disease and its management um, I've included another link here um, that you can find it has some really good information. And if you want to take an AP Human Geography course, we talk about uh, medical geography and AP Human Geography. And if you are in AP Human Geography class, great. And if you're not, think about taking it in the future. Thanks and hope you find this useful and take care. Mm -hmm.